Remember, let us know your thoughts on the content of this video. Do you agree or disagree? And what solutions are you implementing? Five reasons blacks will not fight nor defeat white supremacy. Number five, black people never fought themselves out of slavery, but were released. In order for true revolution to take place, you must destroy your enemy completely rather than wait for them to give you freedom. Otherwise, your freedom is based on their terms and conditions and not yours. The path of least resistance plays a major role in this reason, as there were numerous slave rebellions that never officially led to true revolt on a mass level by slaves in this country. Many were comfortable as slaves and did not want to risk their lives by dying as a runaway, although they could be killed as a slave. The errors of being unsuccessful in fighting for our freedom and it being handed to us were evident in the various blockages that came after the Emancipation Proclamation in 1862. Slave codes, Jim Crow and the Dred Scott case, were barriers that were justified by laws to keep blacks born at an economical disadvantage. On the other hand, we see examples of where revolution is successful and the government is left with no choice but to submit to the demands of the people through action and not just paperwork. We see more long-lasting changes such as in Cuba, Haiti. Number four, loss of culture and identity. A big reason we were unable to fight our way out of slavery successfully was due to our loss of culture and identity even to the modern day. Preserving your culture and identity is a universal concept that unites those in the same culture despite small differences. Today, with technology increasing rapidly, we are more concerned with keeping up with the Joneses rather than liberating our people from the systemic oppression of white supremacy. The loss of culture and identity has led some to adopt white concepts of culture and identity. Examples of this playing out in the real world would be affluent or middle-class blacks looking down on those who live in government-assisted housing or are on government assistance. Sure, we can blame white supremacy for cultural assimilation, but accountability must be put on blacks to unite. Religion as escapism, some even use religion as a point to where they identify more with their religion more than with their race. If a United States black Muslim identifies with a Middle Eastern Muslim more than his Christian brother in the United States, he will refuse to recognize and confront their common enemy in white supremacy. Christians are guilty of this as well. Uniting with whites in church ultimately leads to the we are all one concept, which usually is a denial of race being an issue in America. Objectively, praying in America for 400 years has yielded very little results for black people. It negates you taking matters into your own hands and gives you the notion that you cannot be an agent of change. Instead, you should pray your power away and hope for things to get better. Number three, black on black crime. The 400 plus murders and 2,000 plus shootings in Chicago in 2016 is a mirror of many inner cities in America. The generational gap between the youth and elders have caused the youth to rebel against the elders. The youth feel they are born into this world with little economic opportunity due to the incompetence they feel stemming from the elders neglecting their responsibilities to the community. The elders feel that the youth are granted more opportunities than in the 1960s and 1970s, and the youth do not want to waste time hearing lectures during this instant gratification age. This gap has failed to produce a leader that can unite the old and young on a mass level in the inner city to help eradicate crime. Many feel that black economics is the answer but without solving crime and protecting black business, economics will only circulate in the black community for short periods of time. Sure, many alleged white supremacists 
use black on black crime as a cop to organize police brutality and systemic racism. However, if we were to eradicate police brutality, we still need to create and implement an economic blueprint that will provide opportunities for those willing to commit crimes in their own communities. And lastly, gang rivals and neighborhood beasts, although they may never fully be eradicated, putting culture into perspective will allow them to see that the bigger enemy is not the one in your neighborhood. Number two, female and male relationships. Black female male relationships are more dysfunctional than any time in history. Single parent homes and divorces are all too common in the community. White supremacy has succeeded in dividing and conquering the black man and women when it comes to relationships. A lot of this stems from the loss of culture and identity that was discussed earlier. In America today and ancient societies, marriage was and still is viewed as a business. If you look at some of the wealthiest people in the world, it is a family business, Walmart, McDonald's, that sustains their family and business ownership. Treating marriage as a business means a better chance of black dollars circulating in black communities for longer periods of time. It also means that there will be better chances of creating and sustaining black-owned industries. When families cannot stay together, it makes it nearly impossible to generate generational wealth. With money playing a major role in divorce rates, the cycle of not inheriting any generational wealth means that most marriages, instead of building wealth, are starting from scratch to just make ends meet. In Dr. Joy's famous lecture on post-traumatic slavery disorder, she explains perfectly the psychological effects of slavery were never properly addressed and the emotional wounds were never nurtured, which explains our division today in the household. Black men have failed to protect black women from crime in their communities, and this has caused many black women to take up feminist ideologies which separates the male and female even further. Many black women feel their voices and needs were not heard nor met during the civil rights era and after. Some feel black women were lost in the shuffle of more famous names such as Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and Medgar Evers. These include, but not limited to Fannie Lou Hamer, Ella Baker, Dorothy Height, Septima Clark, Marion Wright Edelman, and Merle Evers, and Constant Baker's Motley, while others wanted better pay and positions in the workforce amongst other issues. Furthermore, the effeminization of the black male in media makes it less likely that black males will lead the fight in destroying white supremacy. Also, American society supports women to not take accountability for their actions, claiming that they are just women acting emotionally. Until black men and women unite and recognize their accountability for their actions in destroying black relations, white supremacy will continue to divide and conquer black, female, and male relationships. White supremacy understands that black love and black relationships are the root and foundation to destroying white supremacy. Number one, selling out path of least resistance. Today, more than ever, many blacks are choosing to not identify as black or African American, but rather as an American. We have all seen Raven Simone and others who have brought into, into the false notion that there is no color or we are only one race. Those who sell out or become economically stable without remembering those blacks who are still suffering under white supremacy believe that racism doesn't exist in the American dream. It doesn't matter how much money you make or if you marry a white spouse. This will not stop you from experiencing racism. Selling out is not just marrying outside your race or moving to the suburbs to completely forget lower class blacks. Selling out is basically an accumulation of all five reasons in our first video of why whites 
will never defeat or fight white supremacy. We know that racism exists even if we deny it, but subconsciously we know it's an impossible fight and will not be won in our generation or the next. Also, fighting white supremacy isn't lucrative, and most often you will get killed or hated from the very people you are trying to save. Martin Luther King Jr. was stabbed by a black woman. Malcolm X was shot down by alleged members of the Nation of Islam. Fighting white supremacy is definitely the ultimate way to defy the path of least resistance. However, there is a role that we play in not holding those accountable who sell out. Realistically, what could the black community do to a race trader? Black people own no industries and are divided amongst themselves to the point where there are no clear guidelines and parameters to discipline those who are straying or astray to the point of selling out. Many sellouts already tend to be financially stable, so living in a poor community would be the last thing on their minds. In their eyes, the same people who are hating them for selling out are the same ones who doubted them on the way up and throw phrases such as sounding and talking white at them in the eye of a sellout. The black community is just a bitter group of individuals who never know the hard work and dedication it took to get to where they are. With a loss of identity and culture means no clear guidelines and parameters to justify discipline when one sells out. As a result, a clearer understanding of culture and identity creates better male and female relationships, which leads to less selling out of a race. To get back to Dr. Joy's PTSD lecture, the overwhelming effect can lead one to abandon their culture for what mainstream society deems as acceptable, because acceptance into mainstream society is often acceptance into white supremacy. It is no surprise that mainstream society denotes black culture into thugs, looters, rioters, who degrade their women. Why would one want to be a part of that culture? To sell out, selling out is not being a traitor, but is a logical, economic decision for one's well-being because we all want acceptance. On the other hand, this is where accountability plays a major issue. The stigma of black-on-black -black crime must be replaced with the love of black unity and cooperative economics. On a much deeper level, selling out can also mean worshiping the material over the needs of the people and your community. If everyone that lined up for Jordan decided to put their money together and start a business community would change overnight. Instead of spending money on the newest cars and investing in carpooling services that serve our community and ensure the elderly and disabled have transportation, our communities would change overnight. At some point in our life, all of us are guilty of selling out. It's up to us to pinpoint and recognize this behavior in ourselves first. In conclusion, we see that just as whites choose to neglect fighting white supremacy by following the path of least resistance, unfortunately black people are guilty of this also. Through materialism and division amongst gender and religious ideologies, we have ignored the very important issues that matter the most. Black people uniting means that we will have to face hundreds of years of genocide from the past and yet objectively perceive our conditions today. This means understanding that the conflict you see every day may stem from centuries of white supremacy, which would force us to being, to see how oppression develops into what is today, rather than focus on the byproduct via the inner city or the ghetto. Stay tuned for five reasons why whites will fight and defeat white supremacy next on Melanated Media News. Until next time, think independently and strive for intelligence. Your future depends on it.